Hello, we are live. Today is Friday, June 16th, 2017. And we start our class, Friday class. And today's class is continuation of the class on telepathy. And I have with me um, Alex, Christine, and David, and Jim. Hey, Jim. Hello. And hello, everybody. And Angie is coming to Jim's room physically, locally. Yeah, she will be physically here eventually. So to, to find us, to find us, go to hucolo.org, H-U-C-O-L-O.org, and um, just click on the event or click on the jump page either way, and you get the links there. And join us on the Facebook group. It's also Hucolo One Facebook group. Um, yes. And uh, we have all the all the repeating webinars are listed there. Hey, Lila, I will add you. I have to manually click everyone who joins. Hey, Lila. Hello. Jim, Jim there is a, f uh, a feedback from you. Do you mind doing a little quieter, maybe, or turn the microphone away from the speaker, something like that? Oh, you can hear the fan? No, I, I hear the, 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 the echo. The what? Echo, echo. Oh, hold on. Feedback. Just a little quieter would be fine. How's that? One, two, three. Perfect. All right. So today we have a, a telepathic class. Um, and um, we already started with we did how do you prepare for it and how do you exit. I will speak more about the middle. How do you work on it? And um, the plan is for the first half hour we do or next 20 minutes we speak and then we invite some expert expert from um, from the other side from okay uh, from the alien world to, to be channeled and ask them to, if um, if they want to comment on um, okay. uh, on telepathy can so write, can you brighten up Wendy and Leela they're dark I'm I'm clicking on them, but it doesn't happen. I don't know. Um, the technology. Yeah, oh, dark. I know, I know, I know, I know. I got it. I got it. Oh, there you go. I got it. Yep. There you are. Hey. Hello. So, um, as I mentioned last time, uh, one of the mistakes when you do telepathy is to try to speak and to listen at the same time. To speak, you focus on speaking and don't try to listen at the same time. And the same point, when you send a message, shut up and turn your receivers onto receiving and be silent inside. Be be um, be uh, be silent inside. So that's that's the main thing. You have to feed the idea of. So you you work as amplifier as a radio when the radio receives the signal it's a tiny 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 vibration but the radio tunes into the right wavelength like by turning the dial and then amplifies the signal so it is visible so you have to make uh, audible conscious effort to notice little little signals and amplify them it's Sometimes it comes huge, but usually it comes very little. But what happens usually if you receive the signal, you receive the message, you validate it by sort of focusing on the message and feeling if it feels right, and then focusing on the alternative of this message, on the opposite message, and weighing them, the positive message which you received and alternative message, and feel if you shift yourself, your consciousness in alternative, how does it feel? If you shift your consciousness in the first message, how does it feel? And that usually gives you pretty strong yes or no. This is right and this is no. So that's the way to calibrate it. And feeling, it can be in the heart, it can be in the hands, it can be some physical sensation, but you calibrate your sensations in a way you know what is positive and what's negative. It is an internal language how you communicate to the spirit side of yours, to your subconscious. So. Actually, you have a freedom to formulate that language and then calibrate it. So for some people, it could be like the pendulum spinning a certain way would be a positive or 
it could be sensation in the hand positive but you choose how you want to be talked to like when people talk to the spirits like in um, paranormal work they define so if yes click once if no click twice something like that but you define the language and then you you validate this language by experiencing it and with telepathy which is nice if you do telepathic work with another human it's much easier than with any with uh, with the uh, spirits because you can actually ask what, what did you send me right so sometimes you can have cards or simple messages or notes or texts or images so first you try to do it telepathically but but then you validated by actually checking what what what, what was sent so this technique was used in um, in california i think northern california they did first institutes of um, psychic work psych psychic uh, it was academic research but what was funded by um, security state security agencies and uh, and the advantage was that academic research has its freedom of thinking and freedom of exploration while while there was clear need for for the for that sensei, sensing and they developed it pretty well I, I guess Puharich is one of the names and uh, remind me the other names uh, Monroe Institute was related to that and there were Swan uh, Inga Swan I think Inga Swan maybe was uh, the key a remote viewer so remote viewer and telepathy are pretty much close to each other it is you go in the same state of altered state you you are partly dreaming partly dreaming it is the same brain with pattern when it's synchronized and harmonized when you become a resonator so your position is important your health is important your desire to be in resonance in a higher elevated heightened state is important and then um and then intention to serve and to be a transmitter a clear transmitter without interfering with the message and you can do either remote viewing protocol or you can do telepathy protocol you can do um some other protocols like sending message a telepathy receiving telepathy sending and um, and they use pretty really good statistics they used uh you know if how um uh, like repeated messages repeated messages repeated tests were statistically tested for how far are you going away from randomness are you are you guessing it at random or are you guessing it at um, higher higher rate and when you develop it well you really become away from random you you get it way closer to normal communication and i guess for telepathic cultures like alien cultures it's even more precise our language is very imperfect like we have puns in russian and english we have puns right and uh, bashar says in their in their language there is no puns because it's so perfect it's so digital there is no way that the same sign the same um, word would mean two, two different meanings uh jim do you want to add anything um no i just had a question well no i was going to uh say that when you're doing remote viewing you have to also activate your astral body uh, and, and that's a part of your belief system that you have to be aware of so telepathy is in person usually and usually with something that is um in your vicinity but remote viewing is someone not in your vicinity so you have to use a little bit more of your belief system to get into the astral motion of all things that are going on uh do you understand is, yes, is that yeah. right yes and so um so when you're doing remote viewing it is a little bit different in the sense you're using the same kind of energy which is correct. You're using the same kind of psychic energy, but you're using your astral projection as well in some ways, because you're going to look, you're going to view. It's almost like um, uh, bilocating also. That would be using your 
other senses as well, as long with your telepathic senses. You're also using your astral body. So remote viewing and bilocating are a little different because you have to add the the uh, understanding that you're, that person is not right in front of you and your astral body has to move to wherever you're going to be using this uh, extrasensory power. Uh, yes. Um, in terms of telepathy, it works locally when, when you have uh, someone in your same room in the same location and same proximity and uh, it works also from a distance as well. Correct. And, um, you know, some some cultures, they communicate telepathically through the galaxies. If they could tell, talk to Andromedans, right? It is the yeah. same as channeling. Mm -hmm. You can take talk, like Jim can talk. Like if he, if he, if he doesn't want to do channeling, trans channeling, he doesn't need to leave his body. And he wants just to ask a question. He can tune into the wavelength and ask the correct question without actually having the to channel for him. They're just sending the question and getting the answer. And same thing with, with the spirit guides and other entities. Can you right. this? How do you do this? I, I'm really not very good at um, astral projection at all yet. It's not something that is required of me at this point. Uh, I know that eventually I'll be able to do it, but I haven't done it yet. I haven't done any remote viewing or bilocating or anything like that, but I can receive a lot of messages from a lot of different places. And my thought processes can go out, but I don't necessarily see it. I don't, I don't, uh, when you're doing remote viewing, you're actually looking at something. My thought process is that my psychic energy can go out really far but it's not looking, it's receiving information. So I really haven't done any remote viewing or by locating or anything like that. Now, Angie, the lady that's coming that'll be here, is an expert at by locating. She can go and look in your cupboard and see if you have peanut butter or not. But um, I, I'm not, I can't do that. Or I, sh I shouldn't say can't, that's a negative. I could do that, but I am not doing it yet so um but i am moving out in great distances to find information and that's sometimes on um sometimes on my webinars i i move my mind out beforehand and and seek who's going to be coming and then people were asking for certain people and there are uh and those so it, in interestingly enough some of those that you're asking for are already there so that is interesting but as far as by locating or remote viewing i am not doing that yet but i know how to do it i just am not doing it yet are you doing it yet max yes i guess a little bit yeah especially when i need it all right see i haven't been able to really i mean i haven't really needed it the information that i need comes to me when I ask for it, so I haven't really needed to do those things. But yeah, as a I know scientist, that I could if I need to, as a scientist, I was uh, for many years thinking of on on a gene level, and you know the gene is really small. <laughs> it is a uh, few hundred nanometers. It's really tiny. It's within the cell, a little tiny thing. And all my thinking was, what happens there between the atoms? So my consciousness was there like this atom here, this group of atoms here, and I'm there. And I was shrinking and shrinking myself, myself into that little little piece of DNA and kind of studying. So how do they, are they methylated? What is the chemical modifications of this, this binding? So, so for me, it was natural to step away from my body and shift my consciousness in, into a little model there and live in it. And the opposite thing happens to people who study stars, astronomers. They go into galaxies, how does the galaxy form? It's like something really huge, much bigger than, you know, things we deal normally. So so for me, it was also kind of healing to go from very little to very big and kind of shift back and forth into small and big and small and big. So so for me, it was like I was paid to it. it was something that I do for a living, like to shift my consciousness from the body into 
into a model or something like really different. And um, after that training, that was I, you know what, that what I do like for any 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 problem. If there is a problem, I shift my consciousness there and I'm there, and I go back and forth, probe it here and there, pocket it here and there until until it comes clear. And when I realize major major connections, it's kind of clear. So it's sort of remote viewing, and often I'm often I'm often wrong, but but uh, sometimes it's I have lots of confirmations that I guessed it right. So so. But but it's a great experience. Um, my question to you was not for remote viewing, but really for asking questions to beings out there, spirit beings and uh, four-dimensional beings. What is your procedure? How you do that? Can you divide it into steps? What do you do? I, I what, what, what did you ask? Uh, when you speak to the curve. Yes. What do you do to speak to Takur? What are the steps? Step one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. I understand. Um, first of all, Takur is a good friend of mine, and so I know her energy very well. So I ask for Takur to come and be with us. So when I ask for that, she, I, I can sense if she is nearby or not. Uh, if she's not nearby, I call out to her and I... I send an I send a signal to her really, and uh, if she can come, I can feel her energy, and then um, I do my little meditation, and I can sense when she is there, and whenever I'm ready, I let her in. Now, whenever I let her in, I can feel her coming in through the chakras, but I feel it in my face. I'll, I'll have my head down usually. And I can feel it coming into my face. But I know that it's also going into my chakras. But I can feel it mostly in my face. And then I, uh, then she starts to speak. I just give her the controls. Excellent. Um, so how do you feel uh, that she's around before she enters? How do I feel before she's around? Yeah, like before, before you do channeling, just if you need to talk to her, how do you feel... If she's around or not. Yes, I can tell because I know her energy. And her energy is some... See, I've gotten used to... There's a few different energies that I know when I feel them. Because they're very distinctive. And hers is one of those energies that I can feel. it, And it's, it's around uh, above me. I can feel it near my head. But Grindel I can feel. Takur, Lakesh, Ish... Those energies are very uh, special and different. They're all different from one another, but they're very uh, similar in some ways. But but the Gurkhfiknir energies are very similar with uh, Takur and Tepa and all that. But Takur um, comes in in a, in a very special way. But the energy of the all those from the ships, because of their technology, is very similar. But I know to her because I usually call her ahead of time. So, how does it feel? Uh, does it feel physically, or there is some supernatural feeling? Well, no, I can feel it sort of physically around my head because uh, what is happening is they're 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 aiming it, they're zeroing in on your um, channeling areas. And so you feel it in your channel areas in your head a little bit. You know, it doesn't, it's not a painful or anything like that. Just a little vibration, a little a buzz sometimes. But sometimes it's just like somebody's just touching the top of your head very, very lightly. So that's for me. But it's, I know that it's different for everybody. Uh, but that's one way that I know. Um. When when you can tell apart, say Grindel from Takur, is it by physical sensation or by some other knowing? Yes, it's by physical sensation because, okay, uh, even though they're both coming in on a technology, uh, their technologies are very different. So the Gurkhfiknir is a little buzzy, and Grindel is a little bit more uh, pulsy. So uh -huh. here's my be sort of like this 
whereas hers is just a, like um, running along your uh, the top of your head. His might be a little pulse feel, more like a pulse feeling. Okay, how is it different from discarnate beings? From who? Discarnate beings, like beings without body. Oh, you like human spirits or angels yeah. or things like that yeah. because they don't use technology. That is a different feeling. And sometimes I have to wait till they actually start coming in before I feel them. If if they're positive or negative because they're so light, they're really not they don't hone in on your uh, channel channel areas until they're right there. You know what I mean? It's like uh -huh. they're right, they're coming in. So you feel them as they're sort of entering. And it's a very light feeling, but you can tell that they're positive or negative you can tell if it's a, a good feeling or a bad feeling so they just actually come in very softly so I know that it's a spirit because it's a different kind of entry um, the technological alien entries are usually buzzy and you can feel the technology a little bit but with uh, spirits it's not like that you don't feel them ahead of time until they're actually coming into your into your channel areas and then you can still reject them out of that if you if you feel that there is a negative uh, being or something like that you can reject it so uh -huh. but if it's you feel very positive then you just let it come in and then they usually identify themselves not always but um, I know a lot of people find that they they get upset because some of the spirits do not always identify themselves. And same with uh, the aliens. They don't always identify themselves uh, or, or even all the angels. It depends on what the message is and why they're giving it. And if they need to identify themselves, they will. But if it doesn't matter who they are to some people, in a, especially in a private session, sometimes they don't give their names because it doesn't matter who they are. It depends. It matters what the message is. But if it matters to the individual, they usually will give their name, but not always. All right. Um, now, in a second, we'll invite the questions from the audience. I will do a little um, chant just to clarify the atmosphere. Okay. All right, the questions from the audience. Yes, um, this is Christine. Um, hey. Hi, Christine. Hi, Jim. Hi, Max. Um, Jim, do you think the reason why you haven't really um, um, Oh, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> but um, it, do you think it's because of your vision? Oh, that no. We, um, not really, and I'll tell you why. Because in your astral body, you are perfect. Your, per your astral body is actually your perfect body. There is no flaws uh -huh. or defect in your astral body. And you, when uh -huh. you are going out, you're, if you had bad vision in your regular body, your astral body goes by the actual blueprint that your body was made by. So there, it would I wouldn't have any vision problems at all with, in moving in astral. The reason why I haven't moved in astral that way is because it's really not necessary for me to do so. And I think so that there are some people that really need to do that and have... Uh, jobs in the astral that need them to move around and do a lot of things and I just um, I can send out the information that I need or bring in the information that I need without doing that so I I think that if I wanted to they would let, allow me to but I, I just haven't had the desire to uh, do that because I feel I feel really blessed the way I am now, so I guess I I don't ask for anything extra. But uh, if I had to, I'm sure they would allow it. Okay, um, I was just thinking because to me, remote viewing is um, being 
to me it's rude going into somebody's life or um, popping in somewhere where you know you haven't asked per for permission yeah you know it's I, not I think that the the reason for remote viewing is not to spy on people but to make sure that people are all right the, my, the reason for remote viewing is to check in hospital rooms to see if loved ones are all right and are are getting better or at uh, different places where you're checking to see if people are okay you're checking situations like people would remote view on uh, the island of Haiti after the after the earthquake to to send energy specifically to certain areas or to to see certain situations that might need uh, particular kinds of prayer and things of that nature but it's not meant to be a, a spying kind of thing and same with um, uh, when you send your body somewhere it is most of the time to say goodbye to a loved one who is far far away and can you cannot get there in person so you buy locate so they can see you for one last time before they pass or before they pass you know go into the next life and you may have that opportunity to say goodbye but it's not a spying it's not meant for spying thank you for reminding me what it really should be for thank yes, you Jim. that's what it should be for yes any more questions? Hi, next one. Hi. Hi, Max. Hi, Jim. Hi, everybody. I wanted to hey, find Wendy. out. Hi there, Max. I wanted to find out when, um, if you can't get to do, if you want to do remote viewing, but you're kind of like almost limited on your skills of how to do it, how is the best way to do it? Um. Well, you have, first of all, you have to believe you can do it. And if you can do it, your skills will get better with practice, for one thing. And if the purpose for your remote viewing is a positive reason, if you're not spying, like she had said, that seems rude and everything. But if you can, if you can go there to, for a positive reason, for some reason that would edify um, you or the people that, that you're going to remote view, then it should allow you to go there and do your positive work. You see, it is a gift for doing positive work. It's, and so uh, you can't just pop in. And um, I, I know for um, site to site, the uh, by locating, you can go to somebody's house and look in their cupboard to see if they need groceries. That is a positive reasoning behind it. It's not that you're spying on the house or anything like that, but you're going to see if they need something so that if you, if you're going to the store, you may get it for them or have a positive outcome with that. But if you are having a hard time uh, with remote viewing, you need to just get your prayer life in order and keep everything on the up and up and use it for the positive good and just keep practicing and you will get better at it. Okay. Does Reiki, thank you for that answer. Does Reiki help to enhance um, the skill? Like, if, like how the car was showing the spiral one? Yes. The spiral, the choku ray, is that what you're talking about? Um, the yeah, spiral uh, in Reiki, the choku ray means bring the energy here or bring the energy everywhere. So that is something that brings energy to you. You can use that to, if you are uh, attuned into Reiki and things of that nature, you can use your Reiki for a lot of different things. I know our friend Barbara Carlton, uh, uh, Max knows who I'm speaking of, uses the uh, the dichomios all day long for all different circumstances to help with healing of all kinds of situations. So I know that you can use the choku rays and the spiral uh, symbols to bring energy to different situations, not just for healing, 
but to heal uh, other situations that are not like human physical situations, but they can give you energy to become um, more powerful in if you need it at that moment. Okay, okay. Thank you. That sounds beautiful. And dichomia is another form of Reiki, you're saying? Well, dichomia is in Reiki 3. Uh, it is the 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 high the highest class of Reiki other than teacher, but the dichomios are the they are all powerful in some senses. And you'll have to learn about that when you take them because you have to understand the reasoning behind them, why to use them and how to be attuned for them so that they work for you. Yeah, I had I did have Reiki one, two, and three. I got certified, but but I what happened is that I didn't keep up using it. So I don't know how to use the dichomio. Well um, in that we sense of remembering you, it. I know it's combination. I you on the dichomios and okay. That will bring you back into the energy of the dichomio because if you already had the Reiki 3 class, then you're already attuned to it. So the energy of the dichomios is with you. So oh. um, you just need refreshed on how to make the, so the symbols. And in this day and age, the dichomios are, especially the Tibetan dichomio, is especially powerful. Angie's here. Hello, Angie. Hey. I right. guess I will. Um, I will ex expand a little bit. Oh, nice picture. Hey, what do you have? Kalask. Nice, what? nice picture. Kalask has a nice picture. Yes. Thank you. So I wanted to add. Um, many people come to. Yes, to uh, Telepathy and remote viewing through, from. Uh, from the lower chakras so that would be not a normal path for many where you first go from survival it's lower chakras then you go into um, noticing other people which is communication second chakra then you go into our games and warrior path when you really experience suffering and domination and you fit into the society so you have a relationship with a bigger society so that's heart chakra, and then you uh, that's solar plexus chakra, the sun, the sun energy, and then you go into heart chakra, which is finally relax, and that relaxation step is absolutely essential to go from the ideas, the desire, the need, their separation into unity. So telepathy, remote viewing, psychic work, channeling is all done from the heart and higher chakras, from the idea of unity, service, relaxation, and being in peace with everyone, being at peace. So relaxing into channeling, relaxing into telepathy, relaxing into remote viewing is relaxation technique. You really have to be at peace and in love space. Remote viewing with uh, egotistic desire is blocked. You have to really relax into understanding that it is a service that you do i recently had a conversation with someone who works on their remote uh, psychic abilities for for many years and he still has trouble doing it because uh because of strong desire first he really wants it right and second uh inability to relax into heart i mean his other chakras are working but the heart seems to be to be compressed, blocked in many ways by Western civilization, Western culture, like I need, I need, I need, I need. So that I need has to be relaxed. And there are many ways to relax your heart, to open your heart, but the most, I would say, efficient is crying and be feeling vulnerable and being open to others to harm you. So opening yourself, becoming vulnerable and and um, dropping the protection is 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 needed to go into telepathy so you cannot you cannot carry all the luggage of the western civilization you cannot be all armed all all uh, weaponized and go into telepathy it, it doesn't work that way you have to relax into that are you jim yeah. there 
Yes, I'm here. You seem to be having channeling already. There was, uh, I had to send a message. All right. Okay. But I wanted to, Angie to, uh, to speak a second about how she bilocates. Wonderful. But she's very good at it. Beautiful. Uh, we, it's been proven that she's bilocated many times for positive reasons. Uh, but how do you go about doing it? Come here for a second. Just put her on the chair. Yeah, I'll put her on the chair. On the chair. <laughs> Welcome, Hi, Angie. Everyone. How, How do you bilocate? Doing? Give us a little introduction. Um, I um, when I was first um, introduced to biolocating, I uh, uh, it, I had to. Uh, I was given like directions and coordinates and things like that. Um, but now uh, all I need is just to pick up on the energy of a person, the energy of a place, and uh, in a, just a, within a moment, I am there. Give us examples. Uh, giving uh, um, a few times I wanted to come and give Jim some energy. And so I would come in the beginning, I would uh, come into the room and I would stand in front of Jim's chair and he would see that I was in the room and he would text me and say, I'm not in front of the chair. I am on the couch. So it would be, so it, it was, it was in the beginning, I just had to learn where, where I was and, and how to, how to move. Well, she was coming by permission, and I want to mm -hmm. make that clear. Mm -hmm. Always, and even now, everything now, I can't move without permission. Do you meditate before that? Do I meditate before that? Before doing your remote work. I can't hear very well. Do you meditate? Did you ask her if she meditates before? Yeah. 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 No. So what are the steps? How do you make it? How do you do it? Um, I, if I need to be in a certain location, first I get permission and then I just go. How do you calibrate your results? Um, I, it's a visualization within my mind. And when I have the visual visualization within my mind on the location that I need to go, uh, and then uh, I am just there with, with is w really within one to two seconds. And how do you know that you get it right? It's not your imagination. Uh, in the beginning, it was, it took a lot of work, but now uh, I've been doing it for over a year. And so now it is just, it, it's just, uh, uh, it's very um, easy. It is very, it really, it is very easy. I just, I bring it into my mind and I am able to just go to the energy. Actually, that's what, a lot of what it is, is uh, I, I go to the energy or the, uh, uh, I bring it within my mind and that's the location that I want to go to and I immediately just go right to that location. All right. Um I have something in my hand. It is something dear to me. Can you remote view what it is? I'm sure. I mean, it's not very justifiable reason to go remote view, but is there um, a possibility? It's, it's more than remote viewing. It's actually going to your location, uh, looking into your hand. It's a rock. It's a stone. It's a... It's, it's, it's a... Uh, It's like a crystal, a type of, it's a crystal. Is that correct? What is it? What is it? Just a candle. A candle. Uh -huh. That's okay. I mean, the reason, um, I mean, the test is, uh, is the desire for validation and it's not sufficient desire to, to, justify the remote view and it is a spiritual practice so they allow it only for positive reasons and this was right. was for right. demonstration they usually demonstrations fail i know right. that from many from many experiences right. well okay so let me let me just explain even for, further with that your mm -hmm. hand was closed 
I'm right. going to just put that out right there. Your hand was closed. So I was trying to read what in what was within your hand. So I was trying to re read within your, so that I want you to know that right now too. Your uh -huh. hand was closed. So uh -huh. I was trying to, now if you would have had your hand opened and off to the side, it might've been a little bit different. Okay. So. Any questions from the audience or comments? Can I ask a question, Max? And Please go ahead. Hi, Angie. I wanted to find out what was some of the difficulties you had to overcome. Can you mention so that way, uh, if everyone, if anyone experiences that, it may be closer to being on the right track. Um, it. Thank you. It's hard. It was very difficult. I, I do have to admit, it was very difficult in the beginning when I was first learning to biolocate. Um, getting the right spot, getting the right location, and um, and actually interacting the way that I needed to interact with the people. That that was the hardest. That was the hardest. Now it, it's now there is uh, there's no difficulty at all with when I need to interact with the people. Um, I and I, I go up to uh, the ships uh, all the time. I interact with Takur all the time. When she is in the machine, I uh, go behind her and I put my hand on her back, and um, and so her and I talk while she is. And I'll say, "Do you see? Do you can you feel my hand on your back?" And she'll say, "Yes, I can feel your hand." So it's I. So I do that. Um, now that does not require permission, but um, I, I do go up to the ships a lot on my own. On my own, I go. Okay, I have another test for you, if you like. Uh, I have in my hand, I have in my hand a card, and um, it has image on it and some writing, and just maybe you can guess a little bit from from what I'm looking at. It's it's something nice. All right, hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so I'm telling you right now that I, 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 I'm standing to the left of you. All right. Give me a second. It's it's hard because I right now see right now I'm in a different dimension. Uh-huh. And so I I have to I, I've split myself. Technically right now I've split myself. So hold mm -hmm. on a second. Mm-hmm. Let me look. All right. Where is the piece of, where is the paper? In my hands? Open? It's in your hand. 
it's a big card with picture and writing. I can't see it. Oh, that's all right. I can't right. see it. Maybe it will come later. That's okay. Uh, what I wanted to say, yeah, yell are very good in bilocation. It's natural for us to bilocate. We it's hard for us to stay in one place. In in in, in the case of danger, we can shape we can shape shift and just shift away from reality. So we are um, um, it, 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 it it comes naturally. And it is a gift to be in multiple places at the same time. And um, mm. It becomes uh, makes a game. On one hand, it's less dangerous. On the other hand, it's more creative. You have you can do more if you can shift and travel by by just by will. Right. Now, I, I have a, can I uh, can I ask you another uh, question? And, Go ahead. Um, I um, work with animals a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, principally horses and donkeys, and I visit them mentally. I will picture myself there. Um, if I keep practicing, um, will I? I don't know if I'm astral projecting or if I'm remote viewing. Or is this also um, valid for practicing that? What's the purpose? You know, uh, my purpose is to because I'm going to be late to view to seeing my friends, mm -hmm. the equines. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I don't want them, I want to give them some joy because they seem to get excited when I come visiting. So mm -hmm. I want to do it that way in case I can't physically view them. Absolutely, yes. So the difference between remote viewing and um, bilocation is you, you move there, it's bilocate, by meaning two, two locations, bilocate, two locations, bilocate. Oh, okay. So you Which become is... here and a copy of you there. Right. And then you can remote view, basically remote view from distance there, or you can do a healing there. So you can bilocate and heal. I, I look, so there are two options for healing. You can bring a patient here, like put them on your hand, a little copy of a patient and heal it here. Or you can shift there in their room and be, make a copy of you there and work on them there. Which is um, the both things that I do. Yes. Right. I do both of those. I, I do want to clarify remote viewing from biolocating. Go ahead. Remote remote viewing is only looking and observing, and and there is no participation. Mm -hmm. There is no participating participation in re remote viewing. When you are biolocating, you are actually participating in in the in the area, in and you can actually interact with what is happening in the area. Rem Remote viewing, you cannot participate. Right. Thank right. you for clarifying. Uh, Jim, if you want to add something, go ahead. If you know, if not, then go ahead. Bring someone like Takuro, whoever wants to speak. Okay. Um, no, I just wanted to say thank you for that. That was thank you. Thanks. And um, I know that a lot of you out there are practicing remote viewing and your psychic energies and all those things that are very positive at this time and that's a good thing i'm i think that of uh psychic energy out there that is you know needs to be controlled and handled and i think a lot of people need to uh, start practicing with it because i think it's a positive thing it's a beautiful thing if you're using it in a positive way so, and I'm going to bring uh, somebody here to answer questions. But first, is there any other questions out there right now that need to be asked? Uh, do you have time? How much time do you have? I have, I can do 15 more minutes. And also, if anybody have seen what I have, what the card I had, um, you can share your experience, what you, what you remote viewed. Was it the... Jim, Google? did you see what I have? What card did I have? Ucolo.org. No, not this time. It's close, but not, not, not exactly. It, I. Because that's what I thought was written. I thought it was. It nope. says Ucolo.org nope. or something nope. like that. It's on related, it. but not. It's related in general, but not specifically. Humancolony.org. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. But, but it, for, for, no. Okay, I, I did, that was just a guess anyway. All but, right, here, uh, here was the card. The card was um, this one. What is it? Oh, I can't see it. I can't see it. What is it? You should be able to. Oh, I was right. <laughs> you were right? Yeah, I said Oracle card. Uh-huh. Oracle card. Ah. That would so be it great. Is crystal and indigo, indigo and uh, crystal children. And an, yeah. an angel with uh, butterfly wings, rainbowish butterfly wings. And it says, uh, I've heard you drone, you have a bond with children. In particular, you can help children who are sensitive. Oh, okay. That would be right up Omron's alley right there. Who's Ali? Well, well, he said card first. And I thought, well, it would either be like. You know, yes, <laughs> a game card or oracle card, and then oracle cards felt more like it to me. So I felt it. Yes, very cool, very good. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty then. I'm gonna bring somebody in. Then hold on. Greetings. I'm Takur. Welcome, Takur. Thank you for coming. Hello. Uh, Jim had asked me to come earlier, so I was already prepared. Thank you. There are a couple others that are here, but I do not know if he had called them or not. Uh, so the question is, uh, can you talk about telepathy specifically? What do we need to develop to ascend? Like you have experience with human colonies telepathy? And yeah. possibly you can give us some instruction. How do you teach people telepathy? How to teach telepathy? Us. How to teach us telepathy? Yes. Um, first of all, there are some humans that know how to use telepathy already. I have experienced that when first learning about humanity. The very first colony at one time was just of human telepaths. And that is how I got to know humanity better, is by talking to the telepaths from your uh, world. But to teach telepathy to humans, you have to understand that it has, in your dimension, it has been told that it is not really a very likely that anyone has telepathic or psychic powers. You must dispense with that, that belief. You must believe that psychic energy is available to you for, for, for the first thing. It is available to all human beings. The reason why humanity says that it is unlikely that you are able to use it is because they don't want you to use it. However, it can be used for very, very many positive reasons. And it can be used for very many positive good reasons. Part of that energies that you exercise when you are a healer is part of your psychic energies. Because you're taking an energy that is um, considered non-existent and using it to heal other people. Giving them energy and healing through your hands, your your third eye, your eyes, your heart chakra, your palms, your fingertips. Yes, this is part and beginning of psychic energy. Now, if I were to want to train humans, I would say, first of all, take a healing class of some sort. This opens up all your senses. This opens up your belief system this opens up your uh, energy systems and helps you to uh, bring energy through your body and help other people heal. That is a very basic uh, psychic energy. Do you understand that? 
Yes. Now, what happens when you start bringing energy of healing energy swords through your body and through your fingers and hands and third eye and psychic energy is that it actually is starting to wake up your other senses, your other psychic energies. Now, some people don't need that, but it is a good way for most humans to start their psychic journey. Because it, when you start doing healing and start doing Reiki or Joe Ray or any of these uh, healing modalities, it does start to awaken uh, other things within you. You become intuitive a little bit more. You become aware of things a little better. And so this is the beginning. And then meditation on these opening psychic areas would be another area. Do intention meditations on opening your psychic thoughts or talking to your higher self or talking to God or angels or something of this nature through a meditative state. This also opens up energies and brings energies to you that weren't there before. And these also awaken parts of the brain that have not yet been awakened. Why? Because, first of all, as a child, they push these areas pretty much closed immediately by saying, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do this. Stop doing that. No, you you can't be a rock and roll star because you'll never make it. You don't have the talent. You don't have this, that, or the other thing. It's always very negative. And from a very early age, you are suppressed. And all those things about your innocence uh, that have great psychic energy, because innocence is a very psychic age. When you're very young, you can see uh, into the fourth dimension in some ways. Uh, but as they knock this down, you are... You no longer have a an invisible friend, or you no longer can talk to uh, animals, or you no longer can do the things that you could do at a very, very early age, and you may not even remember them because you may think that they weren't real. And because your society tells you it wasn't real, then you believe it. So therefore, you, you just dis dispose of the memory because... It's useless. So therefore, you must believe that your psychic energy can be reignited, can be stirred, can be awakened. So that is the first part. Find a modality that helps you awaken that. Do meditations that help you to stir these energies. And then practice. When you're walking into a room or when you're coming into a place sense the energies that are around you sense to see what kind of entering is it a tense room is it a happy room is it a joyful is it a spiritual room and then when you're speaking to each individual before you go up to say hello sense in yourself what what they are feeling see if you can sense what kind of greeting you'll get from them and practice these kinds of small psychic things and you will start to get better at that. Any questions? Hi, can I have a question? Yes. Hi, Dakar, thank you for coming. Hello, if Wendy. You, if you have a friend that you know is sick and you've been working on them all for a long time. Yes. But they have no idea. You know, they always would say, you know, you could pray for me. So I've always prayed for them and send energy. But now they're in a situation for where their health has kind of like gotten a little worse. Um, how could you bring back that person into a positive state with, with you all right. and breathing? Reiki and, and telepathy at the same time and seeing the person. I would um, have a little chat with them. I would have a chat with them first. This is what I would say. 
you realize that your belief, you must believe that God can heal you. You must believe that the prayers that are coming from to God and to you from individuals are working. Unless, of course, it is their time to pass, or unless it is a contractual agreement that they suffer these things. However, if you make them part of the healing and let them know that their faith is part of their healing, then they could be a part of when you pray and when you do healing for them to concentrate on those areas that are not working properly. If it is a heart problem or cancer or something of this nature, it is in the normal scheme of things that many people, when they are very sick, give up. Yeah. And you must tell them ha, or ask them, have you given up? Have you, are you wanting healing? Are you wanting to get better? Or have you given up? Because there are those that have said, oh, yes, I want healing. But then in the next breath, they're saying, I'm going to go to hospice tomorrow. Or I'm going to, I'm going to probably set up all these arrangements for my passing. Or, or I'm going to, they're, they're actually saying one thing and doing another. Yeah. And you must understand, they must be involved in the healing because they must believe they can be healed. And they must want to be healed. Thank and you. surprisingly, there are those that do not want healed. They want to go. They want to leave. And that is the case with some humans. And because they feel that their time has up and they have no more usefulness or whatever, they may decide to leave or decide that healing is not for them and that they deserve whatever this is that they're going through. You have to understand you humans decide their own fate to a certain extent and so does every alien but remember get them involved in their healing you have them praying for themselves as well and having them accept the energy that you give them and know that the energy that you are giving them is doing a positive work by coming to them and saying i am praying for you and i am sending this energy and you can tell them exactly what you're doing if you wish i know yeah. that some people do not accept reiki or other things they only accept prayer because they they are taught that reiki is wrong or whatever so tell them it's the most positive things possible for the, their recovery okay. also tell them they are also involved in this recovery process Okay, does, I understand that. Does, it, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yes, it does. I, and I did have a question to ask towards the zodiac sign, like my sign is Gemini. If you have, if I have both qualities of the male and the female aspect at a full course, how can I use that in a way to gain um, more positive ways than using telepathy? I don't know which one part of my more than just remote viewing, you know, because of the two aspects I do as a self? Bring them, yes. Remember this. God created and is part of both of those aspects, and he can do all things. So do not limit yourself by the thought process that one may be pulling against the other, because you can unite them and have them work together. Ah. And use use that unity of both properties to bring in the greater amount of healing energy because you realize that both sides have equally as much healing power as the other and they have equally as much understanding about what healing is but yet they have different aspects of their healing understanding meaning that males and females have different thought ways of thinking about healing so bring both of those aspects into unity and become the greatest healer of all 
Okay, I, I understand. Yes. And, and thank you once again too, for your help. You are very welcome. Beyond the help of the faith. Hi, Takuo. Here's, here's Leela, and um, I would like to, we have, we have only 10 minutes left. Uh, the last question of the few last question, how the meditation for healing Gaia went, and could you maybe inform us so we are, will be inspired to continue healing for those who just started, for example, like me, you would like to have some resonance about our work? Well, I got sidetracked us. because I was going to make that announcement very, very quickly at the beginning, but then uh, things got uh, changed about. But let me tell you, you are already at 93%, so there, it, the uh, event has been already averted. So Ooh. you have done a wonderful job. And it just reached 93% a few hours ago. And I was very excited. They came to a, a solution that took mo uh, a great deal of the tachyon particles out of the atmosphere and cleared up the area that they were working on. And so the second event has been averted already. And two days in advance, or at least two and a half days in advance. They had till Sunday afternoon at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but they are now already accomplished a 93% uh, clearance. And so the major event will not happen, but they, they will get it to about 98% by Sunday. Uh, should we continue the healing? Absolutely. The more uh, you clear, the better. But you do not have to be worried about it at this point. Your clearing and your energy will just help to um, polish the diamond, so to speak, and to bring right. the bring it to an even clearer state. It needs to be yeah. even clearer than it is, but the event okay. itself has been averted. Right. Do you know, uh, I have a, per a personal question about the healing because I started the healing two weeks ago and that is my first healing in this life. Uh, how was my personal healing because I was not in the group involved? Did I create uh, some energy healing? Absolutely. You did an excellent job. You were working with some very great entities. You were working with Krishna, Ganesh, and your dragon, and many others, to do many, many powerful things. Yes, we did! Hallelujah! I love you. And I love so, you well. so, so, you know, now, I want to inspire everybody who is listening to that video, if it's in the chat room or outside in the world, I am just a beginner, people. And we can do healing, just trust your energies, put your heart out there and just do it. Because I am the living example that well, I am not a healer. But you are. You uh, have proved, exactly. But you prove that you are. The thing is, you are very persistent. You are very persistent about what you were doing and you were able to generate a lot of energy more than you possibly could imagine because your innocence about what you were doing created even a greater power than a jaded outlook. Do you understand? Completely, but I try. I want to inspire people of this earth, our beloved Gaia, people of this earth, please believe in yourself and try heal yourself and Mother Gaia when you can. That is my uh, word for you because well, I can people, heal, I can cook. <laughs> yes. Remember, Mother Gaia still needs much help at this time. The atmosphere and the timeline are in good shape at this moment. Are in not very good shape, but in good shape. But Mother Gaia is still of the three of them in the worst shape. So please send her more energy. 
I will continue. Here is the last question about the healing. If if a human on this planet take an hour of healing, how much time, for example, on other planets, the entities are involved in the healing? For example, on other, like Pleiadians will be like a week? It, it depends. Oh. Um, you, you have to understand, it depends on who gets involved and how often you are participating and things of this nature. But I would say that, that it could take a week or it could take longer or less. It depends on your energy, your purity, the way you're setting your example and your intentions. But set them to be as strong as possible. Only God could tell you how much time that would take. Right. I will have to send him an email. Very, very good. Okay. Does anybody in the chat room has a question? Because we have to yeah. uh, end. I can add, some. Okay. I can add something, if I may. Yes. It's regarding the timeline. I, w I was told that a lot of higher dimensional beings uh, as well were going up to to the angelic realms and other di dimensions to to also not letting the positive timeline to continue on earth and I also got the message that it was it turned out out to kind of be like a war um, a battle between these higher dimensional beings and some angels um, to maintain the positive timeline on Earth. Um, yes, there were some that were praying against the timeline being healed, but this timeline must continue. So it was granted that they were given a solution, and they found it uh, because they were people of faith, or at least many of them were. Yeah, I, I received the message because I also was a part of that too. To help it in astral, but I, yeah. I was told that it, it's fine now, and it yes. is balanced. Yes, you are correct. It is. So that is a wonderful uh, finish up for this uh, Friday channeling. Everybody has to go back home, and including Jim. Thank you, everybody. And if anybody wants to give a blessings. If anyone a has a blessing, please go ahead. I will leave now. Have a wonderful day. Yes. Thank but you. I will leave you with a short blessing before I go. Yurakawa, Ibachiwan, Enzikash, Amziva, Muwaha, Masinja V. May God be with you in all that you do, in all that you say, and all that you are. You are the example of light that will shine in the universe. Do not let it go out. Wonderful perfect. day. Perfect. Beautiful and perfect. Thank you, Tarko, our beloved sister and friend. Hello. Jim, How is we amazing news from Takuo. We healed ninety-five percent. Ah. I mean, yeah, she told me ninety-three percent. She told oh, me ninety-three. Okay, so um, that is you're right. I am bad with numbers. Whatever. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. But that was enough to stop it. But they're going. They're not done yet with. Uh, removing tachyons from the and whatever else there is there they're not done removing them yet but keep praying uh, even though the event was averted there's still stuff to do all right fantastic anybody have a blessing yes I do excellent Go ahead. 
Oisihia, Rihia voho cohosia varahiaca, Rihia vohosia caraiaca, Padia hoia manahia cohoso rohoia, Rihia tohoso to roho cohoso toro vaya. Light was created from the energy of being and then matter, and then all other things. Let it be known that these are all good, and that they will all exist for eternity. God has blessed you all, and you are part of his eternity. Anyone else? Hi, Mr. Simmons. Wendy, can I say one for everybody? Sure. That the gratitude that has been extended to, throughout this galaxy yeah. and given to this earth by many different people can be extended back to them in greatness and thankfulness. And may our blessings that we bestow upon them, that they bestow greatness of light, love, and, hu and humility towards us. So. I give most thanks for all of you who you are, and I give great thanks for all of you that we're going to get to come in the future. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Have a wonderful day. Max, do you have anything? Max is gone. I, I am the one who is in control. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. So, I, I am going to hang up when you are ready. Um, everything's good. I wanted to say hi. I see Christopher joined us. Uh -huh. And Omron and some of the others I didn't say hello to. Hello to anybody all, I didn't say I do. Hello, hello. All the, mag all the magicians are here. Yes. And um, it's a beautiful day, and I love you all. You we too. love you too. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Okay. <laughs>